also uh, do our our, st our scriptures, Isha, that we do in, you know, our four scriptures that we do in the morning. We're going to be doing that. Um, and before we do, let's have a word of prayer so we can get started. Our Heavenly Father, we are very grateful and thankful for all you have done for us and continue to do for us, none of which we deserve. We're praising you for your grace and mercy toward us. And this Sabbath day, we ask that you guide us as we go into your word with your spirit of righteousness, not only so that we might learn of you and bear witness to the truth, but that we might be obedient to your word. And also bear witness. In the name of the Messiah we pray. Amen. Okay. Alright. Let's get started. In the word today. Uh, let's start with our three scriptures. Uh, beginning with Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. And we're going to be reading from verses 12 through 18. Of Exodus chapter 31. Who we are, why we are, and where we're going. Exodus chapter 31, beginning at verse 12. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that Ahiah Yahweh, that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to Yahweh. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of the Most High. Exodus chapter 31, verses 12 through 18. We next turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, where we're going to be examining or reading verses 1 through 10. Who we are, why we are, and where we're going. The awakening. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. And it shall come to pass, when all these things that come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations with Yahweh thy Most High have driven thee, and shalt return unto Yahweh thy Most High, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that then Yahweh thy Most High will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations, where the Yahweh thy most high has scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Yahweh thy most high gather thee, and from thence, and Yahweh thy most high will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Yahweh thy most high will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy most high with all thy heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live and Yahweh thy most high will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee which persecuted thee and thou shalt return and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commandments which I command thee this day and Yahweh, thy Most High, will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For Yahweh will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of Yahweh, thy Most High, 
to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto how was thy most high with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. Who we are, why we are, and where we're going. Revelation chapter 11, last but not least, Revelation chapter 11. Seventh trumpet, where we're going. Revelation chapter 11, seventh trumpet, from verses 15 to 19. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our master and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before Yahweh on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped Yahweh, saying, We give thee thanks, O Yahweh al Shaddai, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them, which destroy the earth. And the temple of Yahweh was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings, and voices, and thunderings, and an earthquake, and great hail. Praise the Most High Yah. Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 to 19. Okay, so we're studying Hebrews, and we're in Hebrews chapter 12. Now, last night we discussed how the history of our people in terms of being persecuted, in terms of uh, being scattered, in terms of uh, um, surviving all types of heinous things that have happened to them, in terms of the Most High's deliverance of them by faith and through faith. And then we talked about how we have, as our peoples have passed, uh, as Moses, as uh, Samuel, as the prophets, we have examples, and of course the greatest example being Messiah himself, of peoples who, through the righteousness of the Father, overcome all. And that the, the Most High is now showing us, as we studied Hebrews, that he has set forth Messiah as our high priest for the purpose of causing us to overcome every sin, every weight, every burden. For us to be made into the image of Messiah. For us to be made into the image of the Father that had been lost through sin. Praise the Most High. So today, this second section of Hebrews that we're going to be looking at has to do also with our development. And you know, praise the Most High. What we have to understand, uh, brothers and sisters, and I want to make sure, can you hear me testing one, two, three? You can hear me, right? What we need to understand, you can hear me, right? Testing one, two, three. Do you hear me? Okay, good. Uh, can, okay, all right. Um, in hangouts only, or can can they hear in uh, Pal Talk as well? Can they hear in Pal Talk? All right, all right. Okay, good. All right, I want to make sure. Okay, what we need to understand is our part of our journey as human beings on planet earth in the sinful world has a lot to do in terms of, the, of our creator has a lot to do with our development okay the most high has intended from the time that adam fell to restore adam's children that want to be restored back to what he had intended Adam to be before he sent, before he fell, right? So the Most High had uh, plans for Adam when he created him, had plans for Adam to prosper and develop and to grow up further into his own, into the image of the Creator. Of course, we know that that was, that was thwarted, that was cut short because of sin. But the 
story of or the plan of salvation that the Father had in Messiah before the foundation of the world has many aspects. But one of the aspects is our restoration back to what we were before Adam sinned. And in doing that, while we're in this human flesh, this, this human flesh that's getting old, this human flesh that's going to die if, if time was to last, what he's doing is, is developing our character so that we'll be prepared to live again in a sinless atmosphere without ever being tempted to sin, right? And to grow and continue to grow into the image of our creator that he originally intended us to be. So our development is all important. And the thing is, is that what we need to understand is the development is the father working in us with our permission. In other words, we surrender ourselves to his uh, school. That's why we're called disciples. That's why the, you know, the brethren that, that became the followers of the Messiah are called disciples because we enroll in his school of development. You understand? Testing one, two, three. So we volunteer to come into his school and to be developed by him and by the Father through him. Okay? Everybody got me so far? So he intends for us to overcome everything that Asatan used in terms of our weakness. He intends for us to overcome all of it and so that the day will come where Asatan will have nothing he can do with us. We'll be of no use to him. He cannot tempt us to do anything. There will be a point where he won't be able to tempt us to do anything against the Father. Okay? And so the Father is working in us with our permission to bring us to that point. Now, part of that, part of that is the development of wisdom. The development of wisdom. And wisdom is developed in us as we get chastised. What does chastisement mean? As we get chastised. Anybody understand what chastisement means? When he chastises us, he's developing us in wisdom. How, what does that mean? That means chastisement means he corrects you in a strong manner. He corrects you. Like you, you know, you're headed in the wrong direction or you've got a bad character trait and he uses a situation or a person or people or circumstances to correct you. And in, when he's correcting you and me, he wants us to learn from the correction so that we can overcome that issue. Okay? He wants us to learn from the correction. So, and he uses various means to correct us. But what he's trying to do in us is instill wisdom in us. He's trying to instill wisdom. Okay? Everybody with me so far? So he's trying to instill wisdom. And, and, and sometimes, sometimes, well, oftentimes, oftentimes, I should say, it's a painful process. It's a, it's a, it's a painful process. It, it, it because, it's because we're stubborn. We're, we're stubborn, right? We're stubborn. And, uh, and, and we tend to want to do things ourselves. We tend to want to worship man. We, we have a lot of bad habits that we picked up being born in sin. And so sometimes this is, it, it takes a harder spanking than other time. Okay. Sometimes it's a mild chastisement. Sometimes it's a harder chastisement. But regardless, it's always designed for us to gain wisdom. And in gaining wisdom, it's designed for us to be made into the image of the Father. So let's start today talking about that in the book of Proverbs. Let's start in the book of Proverbs. And it's a good place to start when you're talking about wisdom. Matter of fact, I'm going to read a few passages from Proverbs. I'm going to start in Proverbs chapter 8. I'm going to start in Proverbs chapter 8. Um, let's see. Matter of fact, I would like to read this whole chapter of chapter 8. Now I'm looking at it. It's 36 verses, but it will help us in, in going forward. Okay? So, um, wisdom means you've learned from your mistakes or you've learned from the mistakes of others. Let me say that again. Wisdom means that you've learned from your mistakes 
or you've learned from them even better you've learned from the mistakes of others that you've seen right and it takes us a while sometimes to learn from our mistakes we don't always learn right away matter of fact most times we don't learn right away but when we start really gaining wisdom we can see somebody else's making the mistakes that we could make and avoid it by not following that path so let's look at proverbs chapter 8 let's break this down it's 36 verses long i'm going to go from verse 1 to 12 to start off from verse 1 to 12. so this is wisdom speaking most high has given us a uh, 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 he's speaking and he's speaking from wisdom okay does not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice she standeth in the top of high places by the way in the in the places of the past she crieth at the gates at the entry of the city at the coming in at the doors unto you O men I call and my voice is to the sons of men O ye simple understand wisdom and ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my mouth, oh, excuse me, the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that, they, that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty invention. So you can see here, the Bible speaks in terms of wisdom. It says, all the words of wisdom are righteousness, right? There's nothing perverse in the words that come from wisdom. She's looking to help people that are simple. And the word simple here means a, a person that lacks understanding. It's a simple person. All of us in some ways are simple. All of us in some ways lack understanding. You understand? So the Most High will give us wisdom to help us gain understanding. Not only that, He will give us wisdom to cause us to, be, to progress and to overcome our sin and to learn from our mistakes. As you and I very well know, many people, including ourselves in some cases, have been in problems for many years. Why? Because for some reason we can't overcome the same mistakes that we continually make. Or we can't overcome the same weaknesses that are continually exploited. Right? You understand where that's coming from? So he give us wisdom and that comes from the Most High. See? It's not something we might naturally possess as much as it's something he gives us in his spirit. Right? Because he said... All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that, that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. It says wisdom is more valuable than money, right? He says receive my instruction and not silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that, can, that may be desired are not to be compared to it. So, and again... There's a difference between receiving wisdom of man and wisdom from the creator. Remember, it, creator's spirit is perfect righteousness. Therefore, if you can receive wisdom from your creator's spirit, you are receiving perfect wisdom. That's why David says, I have more understanding than all my teachers because I follow your word. You understand? So, that's and this is available to all of the servants of the Most High Yah. This is available to all of us, but we want we must des desire to have it. That's what he says. He says you must look for wisdom above rubies and above money. Above everything, you need to have wisdom. So you need to ask the Most High for wisdom to guide you in the way you should go. And then you'll start to walk in paths that he would approve of. Okay, let's continue. Let's look at Proverbs chapter. We're going to read from verse, from verse 12. Down to verse 22. Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 12 to verse 22. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. In sound wisdom, 
I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness. And in the midst of the paths of judgment. That it may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Okay. So again, wisdom is speaking. Notice the words. Please, I would please counsel you all. Read this over and over again. <laughs> I mean, if you could memorize this chapter, do it. Because this here will help you in many places of your life. You will overcome many things. You will be able to see trouble ahead. You will be able to avoid problems. By the counsel that this was giving you. The Proverbs wisdom that is teaching. Brothers and sisters. Is more worth than, than anything. You know you can get in this world. Because if you can gain the wisdom of the most high. And you can avoid problems. And you can help others. And you can bear witness. Brothers and sisters. What's better than that. And of course. It's part of our preparation for the kingdom. Part of our preparation for the kingdom. Okay, everybody got that? Testing one, two, three. All right. Now, let's continue. I'm going to start again at verse 22. So, so watch this when it talks about wisdom. Because really, when it's talking about wisdom here, listen carefully. It's talking about Messiah. And you're going to understand when we read it. With, Messiah is called the wisdom of Yah. That's what he's called. He said he's the, he's, the, he's the power of Yah and the wisdom of Yah. So let's take a look at this. Proverbs chapter 8, I'm going to begin at verse 22, and I'm going to, and I'm going to go down from verse 22 um, down to verse 31. From verse 22 to verse 31. Watch, this is, he's speaking about Messiah here. Watch what he said. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was, when there was no depths. I was brought forth when there were no fountains abounding with water before the mountains were settled before the hills was I brought forth while as yet he had not made the earth nor the fields nor the highest part of the dust of the world when he prepared the heavens I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the depth when he established the clouds above when he strengthened the mountains of the, the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundation of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. So wisdom has been with the Most High, Messiah has been with the Most High from way before the earth was ever thought about. And what he can give to us in terms of his spirit of wisdom, brothers and sisters, there is no gift he can bestow upon us of higher value to guide us in the way we should go on this earth and everything we should go. Okay? So, and, and again, how do we access wisdom? We ask the Father for it. Is, is, is that simple? We ask the Father for it and we'll be willing to learn what he shows it to us. Okay? We'll be willing to learn. I mean, don't you get tired of making the same mistakes over and over and over again? Don't you get tired of people or situations exploiting the same weakness that's in you over and over and over again, year after year after year? Wouldn't you like to overcome your weaknesses so that they cannot be exploited? Wouldn't you like to stop making the same mistakes and stop reading the same script over and over and over again? Well, that is possible if you surrender yourself to the Father's wisdom. That is possible. Because as Israelites, He's always trying us and testing us. And we're always failing because we don't surrender ourselves to his wisdom. We're used to using. See we have an opportunity to use our own wisdom. If we want to. And our wisdom is a combination of what we think. And what Asatan puts in our head. 
That's our wisdom. It's what man thinks and what Asatan puts in his head. That combination it makes, it makes our wisdom, right? When you're looking at the most high wisdom, it's much higher than anything you and I could ever have. It's much deeper and it almost like it's like you can see things coming before they come because of his spirit of wisdom guiding you. And you can already know what's happening and you can already be prepared to deal with it in a proper manner. Okay? Let's finish the chapter. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 32 to 36. We're going to spend a little bit of time in Proverbs this morning because it's going to help us when we go to chapter 12 of Hebrews. For Proverbs chapter 8 from verse 32 to 36. Notice what it says. Now therefore, hearken unto me. You're talking about wisdom. Hearken unto wisdom, ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Most High. The word favor, we know, is the same word for the word grace. Whoso findeth wisdom shall find life and obtain grace from the Most High, from Yahweh. He that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. If you don't like wisdom, if you don't like the understanding of the creator of your father, that all that means is you're going toward Asatam. And that ends in death, brothers and sisters. That ends in bad decisions. Uh, and some of us understand very well a lifetime of bad decisions, right? One after another after another leads you in a bad way, does it not? And so the Most High wants to put that in check. And he wants to bring us into his wisdom of righteousness and guide us in paths that lead to eternal salvation and eternal existence with Father and Messiah and all the saints. Okay? Now, the sad thing is we all understand that lack of wisdom brings pain. We understand that it can bring, as you say, heartache. We understand that bad decisions hurt, but yet we keep making them. <laughs> right? I mean, it's not funny, but it's true, right? We keep, it's ironic. We keep making, falling for the same thing. We keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. So now, today's lesson, the Most High showing us in His Word, is you really want to overcome, this is how you're going to do it. Okay? Wait. Let's go to Proverbs chapter, chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Okay? Proverbs chapter 1. Going to start at verse 20. Going to start at verse 20. And I'm going to go from verse, I'm going to start off going from verse 20 to verse 23. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Turn you at my reproof. What does that mean? When you get chastised, when the Most High is trying to teach you something, Receive it. Don't fight it. Receive it. And when you receive what he's trying to teach you, as difficult as it is, because to receive the chastisement means that you got to humble yourself. So when something happens to you that's uncomfortable, you receive it as a chastisement from the Father. And you say, praise the Most High. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials and temptations. Because that's what causes you to gain wisdom. You understand? So when the Most High brings something uncomfortable to you, somebody does something, something happens to you, somebody says something, some situation arises and it's uncomfortable and you've been in it before and you know your reaction is bad usually, you should, first of all, he said, turn you at my proof. That means you receive it. You say, praise the Most High Yah. Because now wisdom causes you to recognize what it is. It's your opportunity to learn. And then what does he say? I will pour out my spirit unto you. That's a great promise right there. 
If you turn at the reproof, you recognize what's going on. Wisdom is causing you to see it. And you know you've been here before. Now you give praise to the Most High. And he said, okay, I'm going to pour out my spirit unto you. I'm going to make known my words unto you. Yeah. Praise the Most High. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says very plainly, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, the Bible says, I have rejected thee. Okay? What is that saying? He's trying to call. Wisdom is calling out to them, and they're rejecting it. Wisdom is calling out to them, and they're rejecting it. Okay? So you call, so the Most High causes you, 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 you fall in a situation, and you act... Like you're not supposed to act, right? You act that some way that doesn't bring bear witness to the Most High, and you realize what you've done, and yes, you repent and you ask for wisdom and you praise Him for the situation that caused you to fall. You praise Him for that and you say, you know what? Praise Your name for that. Why? Because now you're trying to teach me something. Look, if He didn't care about you, you wouldn't hear from Him. You understand? If he didn't care about you, you wouldn't hear him. Because the people who have hardened their hearts to the point where his spirit is not even talking to them no more, they don't feel no need to repent about nothing. There's a lot of people like that on this planet. There's people out here whose hearts are so hard. They're only in life for themselves and they don't care about you at all. They don't care about nobody. Those people are lost. They're in trouble. But when you have a heart that says, I care. You have a heart that says, I, dis I did not bear witness to the righteousness of the Most High and I'm repentant. I can come back now and ask him for wisdom. And guess what he's going to do, brothers and sisters? He's going to bring you right back to that place where you fell. He's going to bring you right back there. Somebody spoke evil of you or somebody said something you didn't like and you didn't react right. And now you repent of how you reacted. He's going to bring that right back to you. Why? Because before you're saved, he has to cause you to overcome all those situations. So he's going to bring you right back. And this time he's going to bring to your remembrance what happened the last time. And he's going to expect you to act right this time. He's going to expect you to do the right thing because now he's preparing you. And even if you fail, okay, go back again. Repeat that grade and he's going to come back and bring... He going and eventually he gonna overcome the test. That's the, and he gonna keep bringing it. Okay, you overcome that time. I'll bring it to you again. When you keep overcoming it, so now it's not even a test no more. You can see it. A, you can see it a mile away. You see it coming. You avoid it. Now you done pass. Now it's time for something else. You follow me? Testing one, two, three. You, you catching that? See how the Most High is using life of this planet to develop His chosen. That's what He's doing. He's using it to develop his chosen. Okay. Let's continue. Turn you at my reproof. I'm going to start again at verse 23. Now, this is, what's going, this is what happens to those that reject wisdom. Those that never call on the Father for his wisdom. I'm going to start at verse 23. And I'm going to go from verse 23 down to verse 30. Okay. 23 to 30. Turn you at my reproof. Behold. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. He didn't say I'm just going to know. He said I'm going to laugh at you. He said I'm going to laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of Yahweh. They were none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. See? So brothers and sisters, there's going to come a time. That's when the Bible says what? He says they're going to travel from sea to sea, from land to land, seeking the word of Yahweh and shall not find it. That's when they're going to experience the famine because it's going to be too late. 
So while we are feeling the conviction of Father's Spirit now, and while we are seeking, that's why we're all here, and while we're seeking his word now, we should ask him for that wisdom. Why? Because that wisdom causes us not only to navigate through this planet properly, but it causes us ultimately to be developed to give him the highest form of honor and glory in our obedience. Isn't that what it comes down to? Being sealed in his spirit so that we can render obedience. But remember, it's a process. It's a process. It's not something that just happens like that. You got to learn. It's like bringing up a child. A child is born that have no wisdom. A child is born or have no understanding. A proper parent starts teaching the child from the child is little. Start teaching the child. So the child grows up and sometimes you got to chastise the child. But the child learns, and by the time it gets to a certain point, it respects you. That's what fear means. Fear means respect. When it says fear the Lord, that means you're not scared of him. I'm not saying he's not worthy to be scared of, but that means you have respect. That's what it's about. Respect. So you respect your God. You respect his wisdom. You respect him. You respect his truth. And so when he asks you to repent, you have no problem because you have such reverence and respect for him. You're going to do what he tells you to do. But the people that don't do it, they are proud. They think they're God. They bought into Asatan's, Asatan's teaching where he told Eve you could be a God. They think they can handle it themselves. Therefore, they don't have his wisdom. And their wisdom might get them by for a little while. But eventually, it's going to catch up to him. And he says, that's when you're going to call upon me when it's too late. And I'm going to laugh at you. That's what he just said, didn't it? He said, I will also, I will also will laugh when you're at your calamity. You think he's going to feel bad. See, some Christians teach, uh, you know, God feels really bad that he has to destroy the wicked. No, he don't. No, he don't. Uh-uh. He's waiting. He, he's chomping at the bit. You think uh, he's chomping at the bit. And he is right now busily, busily using the, the high priestly ministry of Messiah to prepare his people. Those that don't want his mercy won't get it. And he's offering it through Messiah right now. He's offering his mercy right now. He wanted now's the time to get it. Because when it's off, it's off. And when it's on, it's on. Exactly. See? So, hey. This is serious stuff. But he's off, as you can see, he's offering a definitive way to overcome. He's offering a definitive way to overcome. Okay? Definitive way. Okay? Let's finish the chapter. Proverbs chapter 1. I'm going to read again from verse 30 and go down to verse 33. From verse 30 to verse 33, Proverbs chapter 1. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices for the turning away of the simple shall slay them and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil see when you are walking in the will of your father you have no fear that's like, go back to that same psalm that everybody knows, Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. When you're asking Father for his wisdom, and you're receiving his reproof, and you're seeking to learn from your mistakes, and to be guided in his spirit of righteousness, he is with you. And you know that. Okay? But... People that turn from his wisdom and despise his truth and will not repent the way he's asking us to repent, they're on their own. And so that's why people, when they when they come up with this foolishness, why does God allow people to get murdered like that and raped like that? Why does he allow? Why did that? Where was God on 9-11? Where is he now? You know what? Because the people are on their own. They're on their own. Okay, they can turn to the Father. They can do that. And he's going to be with you. But if you don't want him, he's not forcing himself on you. This world's been given over to Asatan. That's why you got pain. That's why you got rape. 
That's why you got death. It's given over to him. Okay? Don't blame the creator for what your your your, your father Adam and Eve chose. That's what they chose. Now, when you walk with him, he said, I'm here. I'm here. He said, he set Messiah up there. And I'm here. You can get it. But don't blame him when you're not receiving his wisdom and his spirit of righteousness and bad things come upon you. And you don't know why. Come on. Let's not be, you know, willfully ignorant. Okay? Let's not be willfully ignorant. That's what the heathen are. Willful, willfully ignorant. That's what the heathen are. Willfully ignorant. They don't want to repent of their sins and the sins of their fathers. You know, I was thinking about this today. The heathen that are saved, you know, the Bible says the nations of them that are saved, the heathen that are saved, the people that are born of the sons of your faith, because you can't control where you're born, right? You might be born a Caucasian person. I mean, you didn't choose to be born Caucasian. You didn't choose what country you're going to be born into. you just born there, right? But when you come into your situation, whatever your situation is, and let's say you're born a Caucasian. So you're born of a, ra of a race of people that have raped, pillaged, and robbed for 2,000 years. And you can repent of the sins, of your sins and the sins of your fathers. You can do that. And you can recognize what has happened and you can say, I'm going to do that. But you know, most of them will not. And you know the ones that do, the, the Caucasians that I have met that have come into this truth, they have went through hell. Am I telling the truth or have I not? They've been raped. They've been abused. They've been chewed up by this by the system that their fathers created. And they and they come to the point where they realize this is garbage. I ain't this is no good. And they they realize that. And then when they hear this truth, they say, Oh, now it all makes sense. And they come to the truth. But the majority of them are not gonna do that. The majority of them are too proud. Because this system is built for them, by them, and for them. Right. But some of them go through it, man. You know, some of them born poor, or some of them born in, you know, bad situations, bad neighborhoods, bad, you know, maybe foster care. They go through all kind of crap, man. And they deal with it and they understand it from the bottom level that this whole system is no good. They felt it for themselves. And now they turn. They turn. But that's not by any means. That's not by any means the majority. That's a very small remnant. That's a very small remnant. And if you're among them, you should praise Yah that he has called you away from what's coming to the people that the people of which you've been born, that you had no choice but be born. Nobody has a choice of being born, brother and sister. Nobody does. You born in a situation, you cannot choose where you're born. You can't. If you're born in China, that's where you're born. If you're born in Africa, that's where you're born. If you're born as an Israelite, that's where you're born. You can't choose where you're born. But once you are born, you can come to the Creator and realize what situation you're in and what's the appropriate steps to take. And it, in no matter where you're born, it always starts with repentance to the Creator. Always starts with that. For your sin and the sins of your fathers. Always starts with that. You may not all have the same fathers. Chinese people got a set of fathers. Hebrews got a set of fathers. Sons of Yafet got a set of fathers. But it always starts with repentance for your sins and the sins of your fathers. Always starts with that. Okay? And all need wisdom. All need wisdom. And the Father gives it. All coming from different places. But all need wisdom. Alright? And when people that are saved are going to have this in common. They would have received the spirit of righteousness from the Father. They would have received the spirit of wisdom. They would have been developed and progressed. They would have progressed to the point of receiving a seal. Okay? They would have done that. That's it. And so they're going to end up in the same place. Let's continue. Proverbs chapter 2. We're almost done. I... I I would like to read some Proverbs because they give us a good backdrop. We're going to read through chapter 2 and into, into chapter 3 just to let you know. We're going to read into some chapter 3 and then, and then we're going to go back into Hebrews for a minute. Okay. Proverbs chapter 2. Now, after he showed what just happened to people that don't seek wisdom, he's now going to count. It's like Proverbs is almost, just think of Proverbs as talking to you personally. This is the creator Speaking to you personally. Okay? And of course, where it says son, he's talking also to daughters as well. So let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And let's go from 1 to 5. 
my son or my daughter, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thy heart, thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of Yahweh and find the knowledge of the Most High. See? See? So he's looking for his people. We have an understanding, no pun intended, but we have an understanding that the Father's spirit of righteousness is the most important uh, object we can obtain and that we are seeking. He said, cry up after it. You lift up your voice for it. You praying for it. You seeking for it. You want it because why? You want to bring honor and glory to your Father. Right? And that's the way you do it, by copying him. How do you copy him? By receiving his spirit of wisdom and righteousness. By receiving his spirit of wisdom and righteousness. And so, when he hears the prayers of his saints crying out for wisdom and righteousness, he knows those belong to him. He understands that because Asatan's people are not going to be crying out for the Father's wisdom and righteousness. Because if they did, they would not be Asatan's people. Does that make sense? If they did, they would not be Asatan's people. Most Asatan's people look for man's wisdom, and man's wisdom is applied to help them do things their way, not the way of the Creator, who existed before the earth existed, and whose wisdom is deeper and longer and farther than earth ever was. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's continue. Proverbs chapter 2, from verse, let's, let's go from verse 6, from verse 6. Let's see. Down to verse 9. Yeah, actually, yeah. Verse 6 to 9. For Yahweh giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Look at that. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, Every good path. See, he can see he talks about what's he say? He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Who's the righteous? Those that receive his spirit are the righteous. Those that trusted him. Remember what he told what he said about Abraham. Abraham believed in Yahweh and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So therefore, the Father give us his spirit and he accounts it. Righteousness unto us because we're, we're repenting to him. We're trusting in him. We're believing in him. And the object of all of this is for us to glorify him. And we glorify him in obedience. Okay? Obedience. We glorify him. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Does that make sense? Are we with that? Okay, cool. Praise the Most High. Let's continue. So he says, once you are being guided by his spirit, verse 9 said, thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Hmm? Just that. It's, brothers and sisters, to have that type of understanding where you understand what true righteousness is, what true judgment is, true judgment is fairness, Equity and fairness, judgment and equity, what's fair, what's right. When you understand those paths, you start to walk in them, you start to live in them, even though every world around you is unrighteous. Judgment is crooked. The Bible says because the law is slacked, wrong judgment proceeded. And you can see it all over the world. And you start to see it quicker and more clearer when you're in the Father's wisdom. But you yourself are walking in his spirit of righteousness and people will know that. People will know that. Okay. Proverbs chapter 2. From verse 10. Down to verse 15. Proverbs 2 from 10 to 15. When wisdom entereth into thy heart. And knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. From the man that speaketh forward things, who leave the path of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness of the wicked, 
whose ways are crooked and they froward in their paths. So brothers and sisters, there are people, this world is full of people that are always trying to take advantage of other people. Right? Is that correct? That's one of the ways we grow up in this world. We done been taken advantage of by somebody or several people. And that causes us to grow up quick. Right? So you understand, you come to the realization that this world is full of people that want to take advantage of you for their own purposes. Oh, family or no? In fact, more often it is family. But it could be a family or outside. People that, that you considered friends. Don't have to be enemies. But the world is full of people that want to take advantage of you. Okay? Matter of fact, speaking along religious lines, how do we know a church? One of the one, what are one, what is one way you know a church is trying to take advantage of you? A so called church or denomination is trying to take advantage of you. That's exactly right, Sister Josie. That's exactly right. Because they're going to be looking for your money. <laughs> this, they want you to dig in your pocket and give to them, right? And what are they doing for you? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> but they want you to give to them, right? So, brothers and sisters, um, people of this earth, corporations, businesses, everybody wants something. Everybody's after something. Okay? There's a reason most people will smile at you. Either they're, in behind, they're hiding behind the smile what they really want. Exactly. Exactly. So, wisdom gives us the understanding to overcome that, to see through that, right? And to how to handle ourselves in that. Okay? Everybody understand that? How to handle ourselves in that. Sister Josie, I'm asking you, when you get a chance, when you get a chance, can you tell Brother Frankie not to tell us everything good that he's doing with his money that really that's something he should keep to himself and how many times a day he prays should be his own business I'm just telling you because you could communicate with him okay we don't need to know those things the Bible says the right hand should not know what the left hand is doing. And if he's doing it for the most high, we shouldn't know about it. If he wants to do it for his glory, then yeah, he could tell all of us. But I know he doesn't understand yet. That's why I'm asking you to communicate to him. Praise the most high. Thank you, Isha. Let's continue. Let's continue. Proverbs chapter 2. Now, it talked about, just now, it talked about men that are crooked. Now it's going to bring up women. Strange women is what it's calling it. Let's take a look. Proverbs chapter 2. Wisdom will deliver you from crooked men and strange women. That's what it says. So first we just looked at the crooked man. Now let's look at the strange woman. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 16 down to verse 22. Proverbs chapter 2 from verse 16 down to verse 22. To deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger with flattereth, which flattereth with her words, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths unto the dead. None that go unto her return again. Neither, they, neither take they the whole, whole of the paths of life, that thou mayest walk in the way of good men, and keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Isn't that the end result? So at the end, the Bible says, the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. The wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Now talking about women, my wife and I were having this conversation today. Generally speaking, generally speaking, a woman that's in love with a man can be in, when she's in love with a man, she's really in love with that man. He could be a short, fat man. He could be a bald man. He could be a toothless man. He could be any kind of man. But if she's in love with him, that's a man, right? Her heart is tied to him. And he got to really mess up bad to lose it. 
to mess up, to mess up with her because her heart is tied to him. She has an emotional tie, a bind that's emotional with this man. That's why a woman has to be careful who she gives her heart to. Because, you know, once your heart is given to a person like that, then that person can hurt you. That person can really hurt you, right? There's a tie there, exactly. You got to be careful who you give your body to and who you give your soul to in that regard. It's natural for it to happen, but it's got to be with the right person, right? That's why you got to ask for wisdom from the Most High in that regard. Your young girl should be doing that. Asking for, and the parents should be praying for that for their daughters to have wisdom in that regard. So you got to be careful. But sometimes there's a woman that has no soul. Just like there are men that have no soul, sometimes there's a woman that have no soul. And they use their assets, whether it be physical assets or whatever it is, to use people. To use people to get gain for themselves. They're only out for themselves. Sometimes that does happen now. And so you have a woman that maybe she's been hurt, maybe she's been scorned, maybe she's been hardened in some way, and her heart is gone. And she doesn't have a soul tied to any man. And she will use men to get what she wants, right? There's people like that. But also, let's bring it even deeper. The Bible likens his church, his body, his nation to a woman. So when you are messed up with a crooked woman, what that religion, like the mystery, Babylon the Great, the, heart, the mother of harlots, you see, you could also be messed up in the wrong fake religion, and that, that also causes what? Death. Cause many people don't understand, brothers and sisters, when you are caught up in a, a religion of lies, you're caught up in death. It's simple. When you are honest and sincere in wanting to bring your father glory and finding truth, no matter where you are, he's going to make sure he finds you and he's going to bring you the truth. Okay? But when you are not, you are on Asatan's turf. When you are consciously following that which you know is not true for whatever reason convenience mostly appearance also you are walking in death and they make it sound so nice they make it look nice people look innocent but the people are marching forward to death because Asatan can't bring you life no he can't all he can do is end your game in death okay and that is why we also read where the Bible says he will bring strong delusion that people should believe a lie because they had not a love for the truth. I don't care how nice your pastor is or how good your fellowship dinner is or how much history your church has. If it's not walking in the truth of the father and you come come to this knowledge that it's not and you stay with it, you are walking on the path of death. There's no question. I know that's harsh for some people to take, but don't worry. Your granddaddies and your great grandmammies and all them, they may not have known what we know. But I'm talking about right now. You know, in times of ignorance, the Bible says, Yah winks. But now, in other words, when you wake up, he commanded all men everywhere to repent. Okay? He commanded all men everywhere to repent. That's why we don't, even though sometimes we try to tell it, but the best thing to do is live it. Talk, telling it ain't going to work, especially with family members. They're not going to have it. The telling is not going to happen. They're not having it. It's better for you to live in front of your family than to try to tell them. That's not, you know, telling them is not going to do it. Because they know you too well. And they know you at your worst. They're not going to respect you that kind of way. That's what it comes down to. We're talking about respect to the most high, right? We're talking about respect. Your family member disrespects you more than anybody else. Why? Because there's an old saying, which I like to say is not in the Bible, but it's definitely true. Familiarity breeds contempt. Familiarity breeds contempt. What that means? The more somebody knows you, the less they respect you. And if you grew up with somebody or they grew up with you and they seen you at your worst and seen you at your best, sometimes they will use that to mock, to mock you and disrespect you. What you doing? You ain't going nowhere. What you think you doing? Who you think you talking to? You don't know more than me. I know you. Right? So you can't always talk to your family members. You can only do in front of your family members and be humble 
right? And walk in the spirit of wisdom and righteousness in front of your family members. That's the strongest witness you can give. And above all, after you walk in the spirit of wisdom and righteousness among your family members, love your family members. Testing one, two, three, love them. Love them. Forgive them. You understand? Forgive them. Love them. That's what you can do. That's the best way to win them. Walk in the spirit of wisdom and righteousness so that when they say, come do this thing with me, and you say, oh, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to pass on that. Uh, but you go ahead and enjoy yourself, whatever, blah, 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 right? Come do this thing, and you know you shouldn't do this thing. No, you go ahead, go ahead. If that's what you want to do, you go ahead. More power to you, I'm, I'm going to do this way. And you just do it calmly and nicely, and you walk in the spirit of righteousness and wisdom of the Father. Let that be. Let that be the, the, the witness. Talking to them ain't going to do it because they don't respect you enough to listen to your words. They've already heard you at your worst. You understand? They've already seen you at your worst. And of course, they're going to think you're weird. Of course. And that's good. We should expect that. Right? We should expect that. We know, you know? But we just have, we just quiet, confident, calm. Let them do what they do. You understand? Let them do what they do. Proverbs, let's finish this now. Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 1 to 8. Proverbs chapter 3. From verse 1 to 8. Watch this. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck and write them upon the table of thy heart. So th shalt thou find, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of Yah and men. Trust in Yahweh with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. So look, brothers and sisters, this is powerful. This is one of the most powerful sections in the whole Bible, and particularly in the whole book of Proverbs. Trust in your how with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. What's that mean? Before you get ready to say anything or do anything, consult his word. Consult his spirit. And then what's the promise? In all thy ways acknowledge him, he shall direct your paths. If the Most High is directing our paths, we have nothing to be afraid of. We have nothing to be afraid of. If he's directing the way we should go, we are, we are good. We are safe. We are in good position. If we're letting him direct where we should go. Okay? Because he is wisdom. He is understanding. Messiah is the representation of his wisdom and understanding. Okay. That's okay. So from here, we get an understanding of how important wisdom is. How important the spirit of the Father's wisdom and righteousness coming to us is, and gaining understanding, and overcoming our past mistakes, and overcoming sin. As long as we are seeking Him and we give Him the respect, trust in Yahweh with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. We give Him that respect. We acknowledge him first. Does that make sense? Everybody with me? Testing one, two, three. Everybody got that? Okay. Good. Let's let's now go to Proverbs chapter 12. Where we will stop yesterday. Proverbs chapter. I'm sorry. He Hebrews. I said Proverbs. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 12 where we stopped yesterday. So we talked about yesterday, of course... Talking about how important Messiah is to us overcoming all our sin. We talked about how important Messiah is to us in terms of the history of our fathers overcoming all of the results of the punishments that the Most High has laid down and the attacks from Asatan. And about how Messiah is the originator, the author and finisher of our faith of righteousness, of perfect righteousness. Okay. Okay. Now, let's continue. Uh, talking about how Messiah was attacked with everything Asatan could throw at him, and blood came out of his pores, but he would not turn on the Father. 
And that's our victory that Messiah got for us. That's what his victory Messiah got was for us. Praise his name. So now, let's start Proverbs, uh, Hebrews, excuse me, I keep saying Proverbs. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm going to read from verse 5 down to verse 10. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5 to verse 10. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, we just read this, right? We just read it. This is taken directly from Proverbs chapter 2. My son, despise thou not the chastening of Yahweh, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, Yah dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and, and, and we gave them reverence, which sh shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us, but he for our profit. I mean, excuse me. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now look, brothers and sisters, a bastard. Um... Generally speaking, we have gotten that word confused. People call a bastard child a child that is born without wedlock, but that's not what a bastard is. Okay, that it's what that implies what a bastard is, but it's not exactly what a bastard is. Okay, you want to know what a bastard is? A bastard is a child that has no father to raise them and teach them the way they should go. That way, they have no chastisement. They have to raise themselves. That's a bastard child. That's a bastard child. And so the implication is when the child is out of wedlock, that the father is not going to be there to raise the child, to teach the child, to chastise the child so that they gain wisdom. Therefore, the child has got to gain on its own. It's a bastard child. Okay? It's not the child's fault. It's what happens. Because like I said, you can't choose who you're born by and where you're born. That's why, so a woman might have a, woman, uh, a, a child with a man, and then they break up, or the man leaves, or whatever, and another man comes, and he's willing to raise that child. That child is no longer a bastard child. Why? Because he has a man there that's going to teach him, that's going to help him, that's going to give him wisdom. You understand? So he's saying, if, if you have a father in heaven, he's going to chastise you because he's your father. He's going to chastise you because he's going to try to teach you. He's going to chastise you because he loves you and he's trying to cause you to be developed. Right. It's, it's the absence of a father. That's really what it is. Mother has to become both mother and father in that case. And unfortunately, we've seen a lot of that, right? But it's the absence of the father. Because a boy or a child is generally going to have a mother. She has the child. It's the absence of the father. Yeah. So here he's telling us in Hebrews that a heavenly father is chastening us. But if he didn't chase us, we would not be his children. We'd be bastards because we'd be without a father. We'd be without a father. We have Asatan, who's a, who's a deadbeat dad. Right? Asatan's a deadbeat dad. You know what? Asatan is your father. So that's what he's. And again, that's why Messiah said to the scribes and Pharisees, you are of your father. The devil. And the lust of your father he going to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he's a father of lies. That's your father. That's a bastard father. That's an absentee father. That's a deadbeat dad. Yes. You understand? So he says. Now that's, he says if you don't have. He says if you, if you be without chastisement. That means you have nobody, no man teaching you. No father teaching you. He said you're bastards. You're not sons. You're bastards. Now, this is spiritually speaking. Now, this is the good news. Listen here. A boy could be born without a father, and a mother could be raising him by herself. But if she points him what? To his heavenly father, he's no longer a bastard. Testing one, two, three. Did you hear what I just said? So, I'm not going, you see, I'm not going to leave it hanging out there. I got to teach you the whole thing. So, if a boy is born and the father's gone, he's in jail, he's dead, or he just left, 
or he's a mother made a mistake and she hooked up with a man that was no good, gave her heart to the no good, the no good one, right? And now she's got to raise this boy on her own. If she points the boy to the heavenly father, he's no longer a bastard. You understand? Okay. That's why generally people use this term, and I know you've heard it, excuse my friends, but they'll say, the poor sorry bastard. You ever hear people say that? Oh, that poor sorry bastard. Why are they really say That's a poor sorry individual that has no guidance, no chastisement, no direction. That's what they're saying. They have no guidance, no chastisement, no direction. Whereas a person that has guidance, that has chastisement, that has direction, has somebody leading them, that person is not a bastard. And so if you're a single mom and you continually pointing your son to his heavenly father, and I'm not, see what women make the mistake of doing, and it's not their fault. This is how we've been brainwashed. They think by bringing their knucklehead son to church, they're leading him to God. But I think enough mothers have realized that that doesn't work. Right? As soon as the boy get old enough, you can't find him for church. He's gone. Unless there's girls in the church you want to deal with. That's it. But you, there's a difference between bringing him to church and bringing him to the father. You can bring him to the father when you're talking with him at the dinner table. You can bring him to the father when you're sitting on the couch and you're having a discussion about your day to him. You can bring him to the father when he getting ready to go to bed and you come in his room. You can bring him to the father when you get on your knees and you pray for him. You could bring him to the father. And that will stop him from being a bastard child. Are you following? But for us, he, our father chastens us. He teaches us. He, we have to learn the hard way. He gives us his word to tell us what he expects of us. Then we go the opposite way, obviously. And then, of course, he has to chasten us, spank us, and then have us learn wisdom. And, of course, we learn wisdom, but more importantly... It, wisdom is something, listen, it's a thing to be received. Wisdom is a thing to be received. You understand? Wisdom is a thing to be received. It's a spirit to be received. So we must pray for wisdom and we must pray for wisdom on our children. Because, you know, children, the Bible says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It's part of their growing up. All young people. It's a shame, right? Such beauty of youth is wasted on, on foolishness. <laughs> but that's how it is. And then when you get too old to be young anymore and you know better, you're not young anymore. You don't have the same energy in your body. You don't have the same youth power. That's why we praise the Most High. He's going to give us new bodies. We're going to have eternal wisdom that's, that's inhabited by bodies that will never die or never get tired. Praise the Most High, yeah. Because you see children and young people, they get all the power and wisdom. And, I mean, the power of, of, of and uh, what's that? The force of youth is with them, but wisdom is not there. <laughs> and they mess up and make bad decisions. All of us was there once. All of us was young once and thought we was going to live forever and thought nothing would hurt us. And look what happened. We just got old, right? That's what happened. If we're blessed, we get old. Some people don't even make it to old. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's see. Let's start again at verse 9. And go down to verse 11. From verse 9 to 11. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us. We, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he, that is the Heavenly Father, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's the point. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Hmm. See, the point is for us to be able to bear fruit. Remember what Messiah said? He said, he is the vine, we are the branches. The father 
the father prunes the branch that it might bear forth fruit. That's what people do when they want to grow fruit. They, they remove excess branches so that the, the branches that are left can bring forth more fruit. And it's, it's painful. But it's the, the point is for us to be partakers of his holiness and his righteousness. And to yield fruit of righteousness. That's the purpose. He's not chasing us just to be mean. He's chasing us for a purpose. For us to bring him glory and being reflective of his spirit of righteousness. And it's a process. It's something that progresses in us. It's something that takes a lot of prayer. A lot of patience. A lot of uh, what's the word? Consistency. You have to keep consistently going back. You have to not give up the way Ruth would not let Naomi go. You got to keep staying firm with the Father. You got to keep going back to him through the Messiah. Don't let how you feel dictate what you do. Because Asatan can work on your feelings and get you to not work, not, not, not come to the Father the way you should. He can get you to do that. Okay? Yes, that's, that's the pride, that's our pride, that's our, that's our self, self pride, our false pride that comes to us, stop us from doing what we need to do. But that's what chastening is for. Chastening humbles us. It causes us to be humble. And in that alone, it saves us. And it yields righteousness when we, when we surrender to it. Okay, I'm going to take a break here. I'm going to stop right here. And we're going to continue when we come back. Let's have a word of prayer. Most High Yahweh, we are grateful and thankful 